The sheer scale of Carillion's business activities reaches into almost every aspect of British life. Carillion and its contractors are involved in managing hundreds of schools, hospitals and prisons and maintaining thousands of military homes. Carillion is also a major infrastructure company involved in constructing the multi-billion dollar high-speed two-rail link as well as multi-million dollar hospital and transportation projects. Its collapse has sent shockwaves through the corridors of government and cast grave uncertainty over the livelihoods of tens of thousands of workers, including here at the Royal Liverpool Hospital. There's catering staff, cleaning staff. It's absolutely diabolical what's gone on. They don't know what their future's going to hold, and it's not just in Merseyside, Carillion are all over, you know, so it's going to happen to a lot of people all over the country. After three profit warnings in the past six months, the signs were there. When last-ditch talks broke down on Sunday, Carillion's chairman, Philip Green, confirmed that the company's lenders had pulled the plug. The British government quickly promised that public services will not be interrupted, and Carillion workers were told to turn up for work as usual. But reports quickly emerged of staff being sent home, and the mood in Parliament is grim. We have been monitoring Carillion closely since its first profit warning in July 2017, and since then have planned extensively in case of the current situation and have robust and deliverable contingency plans in place. These are being implemented immediately to minimise any disruption and to protect the integrity of public service delivery. The news was met with furious reaction from opposition politicians. Lord Adonis, former head of the government's Infrastructure Commission, compared it to the notorious Enron scandal, one of America's biggest corporate bankruptcies. Trades unions are demanding urgent protection for Carillion workers and are calling for a formal public inquiry into why Carillion was still being awarded contracts despite clear evidence the company was in deep trouble. It's perverse that despite the profit warnings, incidentally in the middle of those profit warnings, bonuses were still paid to senior executives, uh, that the government still awarded those contracts. This is taxpayers' money and there must be a public inquiry. Just a few months ago, Carillion was probably the biggest company that you've never heard of, but not now. And with its business activities affecting so many people's day-to-day -day lives and its unfinished projects so enormously costly, plugging the gap left by its collapse is going to be a complex process. Paul Brennan, Al Jazeera, London.